What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Spilling the Beans. Today I'm sitting down with my buddy Mike Wilkinson, who's a good friend of mine here in Charleston, South Carolina. He has a successful financial business. And um, what I really love about Mike is his, he's so well uh, planned out from his personal financial strategy. He's really, really good with money. He is a phenomenal steward of capital. He's been able to take a W-2 position and increases earning potential, keeps his expenses low, makes a huge spread every single year, and then deploys that into different types of investments. And has created an amazing lifestyle for him, his family, his, his uh, little girls, and he's just an amazing, amazing dude. So I'm excited to sit down with him and just kind of extract some of those strategies, what he does, what he focuses on, and how he's been able to become financially free in his early 40s. Mike Wilkinson, welcome to Spilling the Beans, dude. Uh, so uh, we've obviously been buddies for a couple years now. We work out all the time, um, and I've uh, so so you have you have a, a W two job. You're a partner in that firm, though, yeah, right? Partner in the company, a big financial distribution company. But yes, I am a W two employee now. And W two employee. Yeah. And one of the things that I've always respected about you, <clears throat> one, you got to ridiculous like willpower right like i see you working out Thanks. and and uh likewise um yeah you can push through the pain man and and we we uh and you're always supportive of other people and um and and also watching how you spend your money and your personal finances mm -hmm. and those kinds of things you're very on point and i think uh, you know we align on a lot of our spending mm -hmm. habits and um you know we both know people who spend a lot of money and and uh uh, just say, hey, let me go make more money. But I think I think there's a balance of of uh, being smart with the capital, with the cash that you have, with the assets that you have, with the resources that you have, and then also increasing that that sure. earning power too. And so uh, that's kind of what I want to talk about, man. I want, I want to hear a little bit more about your journey. Um, we have plenty of real estate people on here that talk about building the real estate business. I think this would be a cool episode to talk about. Hey, here's how I increase my earning capacity at at my career, right? And then what I do with that money and how I bought assets and how I've deployed. So mm -hmm. why don't you share a little bit about your story with uh, with me and um, let's talk about the path and I'm going to ask you some questions as we go Absolutely. along. Absolutely. So yeah, so I've been uh, in the financial um, distribution. Well, I work for a financial distribution company. Um, I guess what does it's, that mean? it's a, an insurance marketing firm. So we, um, we wholesale financial products like life insurance, annuities, it's more retirement-based type products yep. um, to financial advisors. Okay. All right, so we're on the we're on the horn with them all day long. So what you're you're in between like a mutual fund and, you know, uh, an insurance company and then you help them create the products kind of a thing? A little bit of creating the products, but more like an, an advisor comes to us and they have uh, a client, you mm -hmm. know, with $500,000 and said, hey, they're 65 years old, you know, what do we do here? What's the best thing? They want income. They want to retire in two years. Tell me what's the best product for Got them. Got it. So then, you know, we have, you know, 50 plus different companies we work with. Um, they were created, these organizations were created, I'd say back in the mid nineties when, you know, these insurance companies didn't want to outfit a huge sales force. Yeah. And so they created these marketing organizations, which you also, you help them with the product, but you also help them market and, you know, you know, basically build their client base and okay. market to, you know, they're going to do seminars, they're going to do um, radio, they're so going to do TV. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. so we're helping them. I mean, that's why they're called insurance marketing organization because we're helping them market, helping them get in front of new business. Um, and ultimately, you know, we're that middleman to help them, you know, with that, you know, product knowledge. Did you start out as like, insurance or personal finance or like financial advisor no i mean i i yeah right out of college i got you know the series series seven i got my insurance license things like that but i mean when you're 23 24 25 years old nobody wants to listen to you yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah i mean really when yeah. your net worth is bigger than mine exactly you can tell me what to do yeah so i think that's where it kind of got to that point so um you know, had some buddies that were getting into the business and they like i said they were you know i think that was right around the time where i was coming out of college so there was an opportunity to get into this space you get in, you learn, you learn the business, um, and you start building your own book of business, mm -hmm. right? And so I was able to, um, you know, get with a couple buddies that were also like-minded, and we built these or this organization up. We eventually sold it to the organization that we're with right now, which is called Simplicity. Um, so we're probably one of the, you know, top two 
you know, financial distribution companies out there uh, for annuities, life insurance, and also AUM. Um, and then so, so you sold to them and then you stayed on? Correct, stayed on uh, as a partner. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, still just, you know, rocking it and you know it's it's definitely gives me a lot of flexibility you, you don't have to go through like the numbers but sure. like how does that typically structured like if somebody has a insurance business or um a book of clientele or something along those lines like tell me how they came in and structured that that acquisition with keeping you on giving you equity like, like what did that look like yeah so it's over time right so they're not going to just say hey here you go so the payouts uh, over yeah time. yes yeah, so the payouts over time because you know obviously those advisors could just pick up Take, you know, their, business and else, take yeah. their business somewhere else. So you got to maintain that over um, you know, three, four years okay. uh, to, to get you know, a, a top tier payout. Um, so and then obviously you want to stay on, stay on because you know obviously lifestyle is good. Why not? You know, yeah, you, yeah. you know, keep keep it rolling. Right. Um, so that's kind of where I'm. I've probably been at that point. I mean, that was probably seven, eight years ago. So, um, but been in the business probably for about 15 years. 15, 20 years. Um, but it's good. Offers me a lot of flexibility, as you yeah. said, being able to. You know, go and um, you know take trips, take experiences, um, and also work at the same time. Well, they know um, your work's getting done, man. Because yeah. I mean, you work from home mostly, right? Yeah, work. Yeah, work from home. And so, yeah, as long as stuff gets done, and that's what I communicate with my team is like, as long as things move, the needle keeps on moving forward. I don't care if you're doing work from an office, from your kitchen table, yeah. or from you know, a beach resort in Bali. Yeah. Like it really doesn't matter as long done. as things get done. Get it you know? done. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, but it comes, it comes with, uh, uh, some time, like, like some people can't take that, that flexibility and, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, implement the responsibility that comes with it. Mm-hmm. Right. And they, uh, and they squander it. Mm-hmm. And then that's why, that's why you get, oh, well, we need everybody in the office. Right. And, but I mean, you're, you're, far enough along and you were far enough along where you could do that yeah. so yeah i mean obviously the virtual model is not built for everybody and we're finding that out with you know, you know during covid after covid yeah. um that it's not working it, it really hurt the insurance business there for a little bit because they allowed their employees to work from home you know you speak with these companies you hear the dogs barking in the background yeah. the baby crying and just like stuff wasn't getting done yeah right and these these insurance companies suffered from it yeah la- yeah and yeah. so it's not built for everybody but yeah i mean definitely you got to have that mindset I mean, I've always had that to keep my head down, just like you said, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I want to keep my head down, you know, put everything into it that I can. And then when I'm done, I'm done. And I can at least look back and say, hey, you know, I put everything I could, you know, into yeah. what I was doing, even if it was, you know, every day, anything that I'm doing, you know, do the small little things, right? Yeah. And I think eventually it'll pay off. I mean, a lot of times I don't even look at, you know, the current numbers, like yeah. what we're doing. I, you know, I will at the end of the month, right? But a lot of, you know, guys that I, you know, counterparts are just like, hey, you know, what's going on? You know, what, where, you know, where are you at this month? How you been doing? I was like, man, I have no idea. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm similar I, to that too, yeah. Yeah, I like to, I, I like to just put everything I can into it. And I feel like. Because you know the activities yeah. that are going to exactly. lead to the result. Yeah. And you focus on those activities. Like, I know the result will come, yep. right? It's the compound effect of like doing the activities every single day. Yep. And it never it never hits as early as you want it to hit. No. And all of a sudden, you know, or, or if you pay attention to the goal as opposed to the activity, yeah. then you get disincentivized because you're, you're disheartened because things aren't moving along as quickly. Absolutely. You just focus on the activity and all of a sudden the compound effect hits and you will far exceed that goal yeah. at the end of the month or end of the year. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. At least in, in my business, it's, you know, you do the stuff now, you're going to see it 60 days, 90 days. Right. You know, down the road, and so that's what I I always try to like focus on, and not yeah. not get too caught up and be like, oh, it's a little bit lower last month, or you yeah. know, oh, that was an awesome month. Maybe I can take a step back. I yeah, you know, just keep plowing. Yeah. Um. So. And that's and that's the, like when I was building my business initially, it it's it's that ninety day lag, right? Mm-hmm. So I'd be wholesaling real estate, or I'd be flipping houses, or whatever, and. And you're like, oh, I don't have anything going on. So you do all this activity, yeah. and then you got a bunch of stuff, a bunch of deal flow, and you're working these projects, and you're like, I don't need any more projects. So you stop the activity that led to that, yeah. and you work through these projects, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, you sell them, and you're like, oh, well, I don't, I don't have any other deals, <laughs> yeah. right? And I had what these I like feast and famine cycles yeah. because I wasn't consistent on the activity, on yeah. the underlying activity, and I focused on you know, the results of that activity, yeah. not on the, on the activity that led to those yeah. results. And so that was, I think that's a great point to make is just dude, focus on, and, and, and there's not a lot of activities that actually move the needle. Yeah. You know, it's like prospecting is, is the number one thing Absolutely. for pretty much anybody. Prospecting for deals, prospecting for clients, prospecting for money, prospecting for whatever it is, uh, team members, prospecting for new hires, prospecting for 
it's like, are you planting the seeds? Are you prospecting all the time? Like that is typically depend, regardless of the industry that you're in, maybe uh, some sort of a of an angle on yeah, that. Yeah, I've heard you say it before. Like marketing is an asset. Yeah. You know, and like you have to invest in that. Just like you said, prospect market. You know, get yep. your, get it get it out there. So yep. I mean, I think that's very important. So you've done a great job, man, of continuously. You found an industry that. That also pays, because once you have a client, once you have this uh, the advisor, the advisor right? yeah. they're just bringing you more business, yeah. right? If so now the compound effect yeah. sets in, and it's almost like a residual component, right? Abs absolutely. So yeah. it's like me buying a rental property. That rental property keeps on paying me, even though I'm buying new rental properties and acquiring new properties the next year and the year after that. Yeah. And so it all compounds. So similar w with, um, with, what, with how you guys do, like once you have that advisor, then they're still bringing you business for the next five years and you just want to grow your advisor base. And so one, I, you know, what I'm hearing is like you found an industry that you can create that residual component, mm -hmm. right? They can create that compound effect and you've been able to focus on the, your earning growth, right? Your, your, your personal earnings. And when you increase your earnings, then you can focus on the next step of like, how do I keep my expenses down? And then, you know, take that spread and start investing. So talk about like, where did you learn about personal finance? Where did you like? Probably goes back to my dad, um, to be honest. Like, you know, he, he In a good way or a bad way? I, As a good example or I bad mean, example? I think, I think it's a good example from the, you know, the aspect of he, you know, he was a saver. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, you know, always, it didn't focus on, you know, the, the expensive cars and, you know, yep. could he have? Yes, absolutely. But I think he, he was a saver. He bought rental properties, things like that. So, I mean, I, I definitely got that from him. Um, you know, I guess, and, you know, what he did not do, um, and we've talked about a little bit, you know, this before, is, like, he didn't take the time now to invest in yourself now as far as health, well-being, diet, experiences, yeah. um, you know, doing those things. Because, um, because yes, I mean, those are important, right? You want to, you know, use what you, you know, you're earning now to go and find deals, find things like that. But also, you know, I'm getting sidetracked here on the health but, side, but, but, but yeah. But almost, but almost sac overly sacrificed for yes. the almighty dollar. Yes. In yeah. order to see the bank account grow, which is important, but not to sacrifice relationships, not yeah. to sacrifice experiences, exactly. not to sacrifice health. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's that delayed gratification. Yeah. Right. It was that whole generation, your parents' generation, my yeah, parents' my, my gen generation. Same, right? Yeah. Where they saved, they saved, they saved. And, you know, not all of them took care of their bodies mm -hmm. to where now, I mean, he's going to have a comfortable, I mean, he's in retirement. He's retired at, you know, I don't know, 60. So he retired young. Yeah. But I mean, he's not doing anything. It's like, you know, but he's, he's starting to travel a little bit, but he can't do He's just not moving as well, things like that. So I love you, Dad, but um, I think that's where, you know, I think at that time, like he, like right now, spend them, like you're, you're investing um, in, you know, assets, you're building your, you know, your portfolio, different things. You know, we can go into the kind of the things I've, you know, I, I'm looking to do right now and I have, but invest in the experiences now, right? Um, let's and, not. And that's, and that's what I re really respect of what I've, um, Observed, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think you and I are very similar in that regard. Where when we go out, like, dude, I don't spend money. Like, I get this you look is good, man. This is a, a you nice smell shirt. great, by the way. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Thanks. Buddy. Thanks. <laughs> hey, hey, I tell you what, if it wasn't for Wednesdays filming days, dude, I would never shave. I'd never wear a collared <laughs> shirt. I would, dude, I'd be a disaster. Um, cut my nails today. Right. Like, yeah. It's one of those. Yeah. I'm like, shit, I gotta clean yeah. myself up. Uh, so it's it's, it's uh it's one of those constraints that I put on myself That's to right. make sure yeah. I stay yeah. cleaned up and, and well That's groomed. Right. And so, but like, dude, I don't even know what brand is this. I don't. This know. is what it's brand the, is this? The whale this brand. This is the whale. No, yeah. I seriously don't. I, I, I think it's Vineyard Vines. Vineyard Vines. Vineyard Vines. I, I know of Vineyard Vines, but I can't remember the name of it because I really don't. I've never been to the website. This was, this shirt was bought by my wife, on a discount clearance sale. Right, like. Good for her. Dude, yeah. my jeans are from either Old Navy or Gap, and I bought them with a gift card. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, just like, just like that's me. the kind of decisions I make for things that, because, dude, yeah. we have little kids. Yeah. My kids, you know, I hold them, and it, it, they, they put their shoes all over my, yeah. my clothes, right? Or my daughter spits up on me, yeah. or, you know, like, dude, whatever happens. And it's like, I'm not going to spend money on something that I know is going to get wrecked or ruined or yeah. something like that. 
And so like, I don't like spending money on, um, on clothes, right? Like, I, uh, I really like watches, but I will not spend more than a couple thousand dollars on a watch. Yeah. I'm just, I don't get, I, I don't like watches that much, yeah. right? Like, it, for me to spend $40,000 on a watch, there's, I, I'd rather spend, I'd get just as much gratification from a $2,000 watch and then taking 38 grand and bit, and taking my family on a ridiculous trip to Europe yeah. or doing something mm -hmm. fun, you know? Yeah. And so like that to me, I don't mind spending money and I've seen you do the same thing of like, hey, do we really need the the excess whatever? Mm -hmm. No, we don't. Like let's, uh, let's, let's, I don't know, move that money and let's divert it over here yeah. to doing an awesome trip to Portugal mm -hmm. that you guys just took. and. Um, and stuff like that. So talk to me about that, that philosophy and that mindset. Yeah, I think, you know, I've, I have this mindset, but I also, I think it has been expanded upon by, uh, I read this book called Die With Zero. I don't know if I told you about Di that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I told Dan about I think it. You did uh, a little bit, yeah. But uh, a guy named Bill Perkins wrote it. But I mean, the, the idea is it's about, you know, it's about the experiences. It's about the relationships, as you mentioned, yeah. right? You're not going to look back when you're, you know, 75, 80 years old and, you know, you're not moving as well. Um, you're not going to look back and be like, you know, hey, I got $10 million in the bank. You're going to look back and be like, man, that was a cool experience or, you know, that, you know, yeah. as far as like the money that you have at that point, he all, there, he's also talks about like give it away now right. versus, you know, mm -hmm. don't wait and, you know, like the give it to your, you know, you can always give money to a charity, give it to your kids, things like that. But you're talking about the trust do things now because they can more benefit more now than mm -hmm. like, you know, when you're dead, I mean, they're going to be fighting over it. Right. Yep. So do it now, give it away now. Um, so it's not necessarily, you know, spend all your money, but it's interesting. Yeah. So like, it, you know, spend the money on experiences now, but yeah, you know, obviously put a little aside, you know, that you can invest, um, you know, for, for, for retirement, but you know, spend the money now, go get the experiences so you can like, you know, basically don't die with a bunch of money in the bank where, you know, you worked hard to make that money. Yeah. Right. Um, and the, if you know, you could have been, living you could have been you know going on a, a trip to europe as you mentioned rather than working so right. you know that that sort of uh mindset there's and there's there's like there's two schools of thought right do i live below my means yeah. or do i increase my means yeah well i think you gotta be doing a little bit of both a little bit of both right mm -hmm. and from a from a living like you can only reduce and live below your means so much up until the point where you start sacrificing like what we're talking sure. about certain aspects of your life and your relationships and your health and things like that. And you can only save so much, yeah. right? I mean, you still have to spend money on food. You still got to spend money on gas. Exactly. You still got to spend money on housing and clothes and stuff like that. And you can only compress that so much. Whereas earning potential, increasing your means yep. is limitless, yep. right? Like there's no limit. And what I've found is that there's, there's also like a, a financial thermostat, at least that I have. And I've, I've seen, it happened on other people is like when the bank account gets down to here, I'm like, Oh shit, I need to go and work a little harder yeah. and make some more money. Some more right. Money, or, yeah. or get a little bit resourceful and creative and, uh, turn the activity up in order to increase, you know, the number in the bank account sure. and get the thermostat back up. And, um, uh, and so, so, you know, if I'm going to, so I like the idea of, dude, I just, a lot of the things that I spend my money on or I reduce the financial thermostat on are like, Dude, plugging money into the kids' accounts, yep. like the bank account, um, between their bank account, their their whole life insurance policy, mm -hmm. their five twenty nine plan. I thought I have something else. Oh, and their four hundred one or their uh, the Roth IRA. Dude, my my kids my kids have a greater net worth today than I had when I was probably thirty years old. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's awesome. Like, yeah, and so and 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 realizing that our kids are going to be okay. Um, I like the idea of, dude, just spend the money on them right now, educate them right now. Exactly. Because um, they're going to need it earlier, right? Yeah. They, yeah like when you, dude, when you it pass when away, when, when you pass old, away when you're 80, yeah, and they're yeah. 45, 50 years old, you know, like what, what they, are got, they, they already have tons of money and they have a job, they, you know, have a career, right. they have kids, like they're fine, right? And then they're just going to take it and pass it to their kids, yeah. you know? So it's I like. I needed money when I was broke it, trying to get my business exactly. off. Exactly. So that's, that's, that's a little it. bit of the philosophy that he's trying to push there. So I like what you're doing with the Roths uh, yeah. with, with them. I think I need to do that. I mean, obviously do the 529, things like that. Uh, but well, the beauty about South Carolina is you can cap out at 529 at any amount. Yeah. Uh, up in Ohio, it was like $2,000 a year that okay. you had the write off on. Yeah. And then anything above that, you didn't get a write-off on. South Carolina, you can, but I you think know, now you that... can move the fine. You don't have to use it for education anymore. Yeah. So I think you can move that 
to like a, is it Roth? Well, well, I think they expanded it. I know they at least expanded it from just being higher education to now you can use it for, for uh, like books and the, study trips and things like that, okay. even for like high school and Got things it. along those lines. Um, and I, and like, uh, what are they called? Um, like technical skills and yeah. like stuff like that, that they can go out and learn and, 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 and they've at least expanded it. I don't know if you can roll it over. Maybe you can, but I know you can roll it over from, if one kid doesn't use it, you can roll it to the next kid Got it. or roll it to the next kid or gift it to like a cousin. I think you can do that. Um, but, but you know, Hey, I think, I think, you know, setting that up, you know, I, I always try to, I go broke by, by hiding money from myself. Right. Yeah. And just, knowing that the kids are going to be taken Absolutely. care of and knowing that yeah. like uh, the retirement accounts taken care of and, and those kinds of things that that's all the stuff that I put on like auto pay all the yep. time and, uh, and make sure I just kind of like, that's a good point that myself. you bring up as far as like what I, I do this well, right. I think that's a good personal finance thing to do. Right. Yeah. As far as like put it on autopilot where it's like, you know, your advisor is just peeling it out of your account. Yeah. Right. That way, every single month, you know, you're it's it's just going there and it's building up and you don't even realize you look over and you're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize it was yep. it was already there. 401ks. Right. I am a W2 employee now. Like anybody that has a 401k, make sure you're doing that. Right. Like with the, like with the match, with the match, yeah. you're like, that's just free money that a lot of people are, are just giving up. Like yep. do the max that you can to, to the at least to yep. the match. Right. So do that. It's tax deferred money. Um, so I think that's another good one. Um, yeah. If you can you can invest in a Roth for your children. I think that's good. Um, well, the beauty about investing in a Roth is, uh, like, you can pay your kids, assuming, like, they have to be doing something for your business, yeah. right? So my kids are in a bunch of social media videos, and we've done um, promotional marketing type stuff okay. with my kids talking about things. And uh, I also have my kids um, promoting the, the children's books that we wrote, the Little Legacy Library. And check out littlelegacylibrary.com, by the way. <laughs> so do they have to share? They have to show... You have to like actually do a, a, like a tax return for them because they have earned income to be able to yeah, invest. Yeah, but, but think right? about their tax bracket compared to yours. It's like yeah, they're at they're nothing. at yeah. yeah. Um, if they make less than I can't remember the number, but I think it's fifteen grand or less. Yeah. There's zero, zero tax bracket, but there is like self employment tax. Okay. So they have to pay I don't know, call it seven and seven ten percent something like that okay. on whatever money that you do pay them. Okay. Um, I and I'm I'm not. Talk to your CPA. I'm not giving you whatever. Uh, we're talking more strategy here, but definitely meet with your own CPA and talk to them about what this looks like. But you could, you could essentially have a write-off from your business, yeah. pay your kids. They then claim that on their tax return. They're at a lower tax bracket than what you and I would be at. And, um, and then now they can fund a Roth IRA. Yep. Uh, I like the 401k if there's a match yeah. to it, but if you're, if you're, only looking at 401k or IR, Roth IRA yeah. or a Roth component of uh, some other retirement account, I would rather go with Roth because, dude, as, as we know, yeah. tax deferred is good, but taxes are only going to go Brackets, up. Yeah. And your yeah. earning potential is only going to go up, yeah. and which means that you're going to be in a higher tax bracket later when you access those funds. Yeah. So I'd rather pay taxes with, for my kids right now at the lowest tax bracket yeah and then let the money grow tax-free and then be able to pull it out tax-free in the future. So the idea would be, you know, pay them seven grand a year, roll it into a Roth IRA. You know, if they're, you know, start paying them at five years old and by the time they're 20, dude, that's, uh, what was that, 15 years, it's, that's over $100,000 yeah. you put in there, plus all the returns. It's, a write, the off it's a write off for you as well, and right? It's a write off yeah, for you, yeah, yeah. right? And then you allow that to grow and all of a sudden, man, your, your kids are set up in a big yeah. way. That, you know, seven grand, eh, you're not going to realize that that money's gone for how big of an impact it's going to make yeah. on that on that allowance of time that it compounds. Uh, Absolutely. Over and we were talking about, ago. like, you know, down the line, if you've got all this money just saved up to give them or pass, pass on to them, I mean, it's like, do that now. For sure. Yeah. So I think that I love that part about that. For that, sure. That, that book. So talk about talk about how you've turned your house into an asset, right? Where it yeah. generates, it generates. Revenue. Absolutely. So yeah. So you, you, have, you have a beautiful home you guys built and, and here you got something called an ADU. Explain what yeah, that is. Yes. So we have an ADU, which is an additional dwelling unit. Um, and, um, it's separate. You don't, you don't live in a duplex. No. Right? Yeah. It's, so we have a main single family home with, with, with a detached garage. Yeah. Right. And so the detached garage has a, you know, full apartment above it. And the whole idea is when we moved into it, you know, we both know Alan who, who built it. I mean, I wanted to create to where that was an income producing 
mm -hmm. you know, asset. And, you know, we set it up to where to access the actual apartment. They don't come inside our property. Um, and so we put it they on. They can access it from the road. Correct. Not even coming in the fence. They don't come the inside the fence. Um, and so it's, you know, for two, three years that we had it, we did like a long term, you know, tenant, which was great. But, you know, we couldn't use it. Um, so we're, you know. I was like hesitant to get into the Airbnb game. I don't know why, but uh, I wish I would have done it sooner. I think people um, think it's more work than yeah, it actually is. Yeah, I think that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, is this gonna rent? Yeah. You know, and um, we, we put it up on Airbnb, I don't know, like a month before COVID, which is bad timing, but, right? So it was like dead for 60 days. And I was yeah. like, okay. And then all of a sudden it's been, like after that, it's just been like gangbusters, right? And, and what like, does it rent for compared to uh, like a what, hotel? term rent. Oh, uh, long term. Like okay, yeah. So, so, like, if you were getting a thousand dollars a month for your long term, what, what, what? How many times more are you getting for? Uh, yeah, it? like two x, three x of what yeah. I was getting on a long term rental. Um, and then we also have access to it, right? right? And yeah. so you can you can block it off yeah. if you have family in town yeah. or they're coming to yeah, visit. Yeah, it's it's uh it, it's a huge difference. Uh, it's not that much work. So I definitely. Like if you have money to be able to invest in like a short term rental and it, you know, the, your town allows it. I mean, go for it. I mean, I feel like, you know, especially with a, these destination type yeah. towns that we live in here. I mean, it's, you know, I think it's like, a, you know, the average 200, 225 a night. I mean, somebody goes downtown and we, we rented downtown or rented. We went to a hotel. Mm -hmm. It was like five, six hundred dollars for the cheapest hotel downtown. <laughs> so think about it. these people are loving it when they yeah. they come and they're only spending. They get their own place. They get their own bedroom. They get a full kitchen. Um, so yeah, so we've created that asset, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's almost like we're living for free. Right. So and that's, and that's the thing, like my brother lives in DC, um, and, and he bought a million dollar row house, okay. right? He can't afford a million dollars. I mean, they gave him a loan for it. Right. So, but he would be very stretched yeah. by, uh, uh, buying a million dollar row house, but it's like, it's four stories and it's like standard in DC. And you see this in New York and yeah. Boston stuff where like the ground floor unit, can be turned into its own okay. apartment. Awesome. And so that's what he did. He, he sealed that off the stairs and uh, got rid of that. And so uh, he has the downstairs unit and it's rented for, what's he getting, $2,500 a month yeah. for it that's in awesome. DC? Good for him, man. And so like, dude, that, that when you think about it, that covers like a $500,000 mortgage. Yeah. yeah. You know? So it's like he owns a, it's like he's only paying for a $500,000 house as opposed to a million dollar house, mm -hmm. it allows them to get into a bigger asset. Mm -hmm. It allows somebody else to help pay down the balance on his mortgage, on his asset, mm -hmm. that, I don't know, 25 years from now, this is worth $2 million. Absolutely. And the tenant paid for half of it, yeah. and he owns it free and clear. Cool. And now he's got a $2 million asset that, that he owns free and clear at the age of, I don't know what he'll be, but let's call it 70 years old, yeah. right? And Dude, I can tell you his 401k is not going to be that big from his job. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, his re retirement account's not going to be that big from his job. And it's like it shows the power of buying real estate and that anybody can house hack. You know? Absolutely. Without yeah. it being a detriment to renting out a room in your own house or living in a duplex yeah. or something like that. Like that's that's cool too. Yeah. But you've done it in a way where, dude, you have a $3 million home, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it's, a, it's a stunning property, beautiful home in an amazing location. And you're making a ton of money from, yeah. from a unit that doesn't adversely affect you um, or your lifestyle or your kids or the safety or anything like yeah. that at all. And uh, it's just a smart way of doing it. Yeah, and I think that's the, like, the, 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 the wealth accumulation story that you were kind of talking about. Where a lot, you know, we, we're not looking at those, those small little things, getting the nice car, going to, even going huge on a house, right? I mean, does, does you know, my wife want it? Absolutely. She, that's what kind of we came to this like, you know, uh, point where we're like, can we get a pool? You know, like yeah. I mean, if we can, we'll stay here. But like she wanted to move within the neighborhood. And I'm thinking to myself, like, man, we've won. Yeah, like, yeah. What, why would we why would we move? Right? right. We've won. Look what look what we're doing here. Right. We're covering more than our mortgage yep. with with this. Because uh, you, know, you bought it right. Yeah, right? You, correct. You, we you got in it for good time. The sweat equity. Yeah. But I'm like, why would we want to go and triple our mortgage? And then, you know, in our particular town, we don't you know, like they have a cap on short term rentals. That's why you got to check. Right. You got to check with your town to make sure that you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, we got in at the right time to be able to start it, um, you know, a short term rental. Because uh, I, yeah, I think in you know in, in in Mount Pleasant, there's I don't know two years, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Two you know. Yeah. Two year wait list to be able. So if we try to replicate that um, in the neighborhood, then I don't know. We're waiting a couple of years, right? Yeah. So I just feel like, man, I'm like, man, yeah. 
save what you can now, experiences, relationships, you know, just keep pounding that. Well, and, and the other thing that you did, you know, I alluded to the Portugal trip you guys yeah. took. When was that, last summer? Mm -hmm. or, yeah, so last summer, you then, you guys Airbnb your house then, right? So the, the yeah, we want it. Yeah, we had the opportunity. We did not, and like I've been talking to her about doing that again. It's 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 more about somebody living in your own yeah, house, but yeah. well, you guys do it all the time. So I need yeah, I need Kate well, to you know be able to. Uh, it, it's also you know our house was built as like a vacation rental, yeah. and we have our our original home and our very homey feel up in Cleveland. It's you know uh, one tenth that's the your, amount of that's house your this home. is. Yeah. Got it. Got so it. that one feels yeah. more like a okay. home, and this one feels. Because the floor plan's not what Kate yeah. wants, and she wants to change some things. Like the view is unbelievable, but like she doesn't have the attachment to this house as she yeah. does the one yeah. in Ohio. And uh, and dude, she doesn't want people living in our house. But over the summertime, dude, we're on the beach in yeah. Charleston, South Carolina. We're not using yeah. the house, and it's like uh, it'll rent for twelve to thirteen thousand dollars a week, yeah. minimum, yeah. minimum. And so we're not here for ten weeks. We can make an extra hundred thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And all we have to do, dude, we finished our basement. We put our, all of our personal belongings in boxes. We just put it in the basement. Store it away. And store it away for the yeah. summer. And then, yeah, is it a pain in the ass for, you know, Hope three days can, before yeah. and three days after? Exactly. Yes. To, to un but, dude, is it worth a hundred plus thousand dollars for one week of inconvenience? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. It, it almost pays for our mortgage the entire year. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, again, it's, it's trying to, it's taking something like an asset, and instead of taking money out of your pocket, that's a liability. Yeah. I, know it's, I know it's your home, but it's a liability if you take money out of your pocket. But if you can rent it or, or come up with a way to monetize it, uh, dude, I think it's a good financial yeah. thing that you can do in order to at least bridge the gap until you got a few money and then you can exactly. you know, blow it on a bunch of stupid shit like, uh, <laughs> like the, not the Rockefellers, but the um, uh, Vanderbilts did, yeah. right? But then they all went broke, yeah. these friggin' idiots, you know, because they didn't do that. They yeah. took a bunch of money didn't realize, didn't, didn't know how to monetize or, uh, yeah, the, the things that they bought. And they, they bought a bunch of liabilities. Like, dude, when they built the Biltmore, they built it in, I think they finished it in 1896. They had to turn it into a friggin' museum yeah. within 30 years, yeah. right? By, by uh, 1929, when the Great Depression happened, they couldn't afford they it couldn't anymore. couldn't afford it anymore, yeah. Because they had over 100 staff members. <laughs> they had to turn it, like, they, they took, they were the second or third wealthiest i think they were, they were the wealthiest until rockefeller overtook them they were the wealthiest family in the entire united states dude and then they blew through all the money in less than 50 years that's insane yeah right it's fucking stupid yeah. and it shows you that it doesn't matter how much money you have it's how you're spending yeah, it how much how, spend right, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and what are you doing with that money are you buying assets or are you buying liabilities mm -hmm. and are you a good steward of the capital versus not so um let's uh Let's roll into your alternative investments. Okay. I know you do you do a lot of LP investing in mm -hmm. real estate deals. You do some hard money lending mm -hmm. to some of the real estate guys in town. So, like, talk about how do you look at those investments? How do you say, hey, this is a good deal, bad deal? Is this somebody I want? You know, is it the person or mm -hmm. like what do you guys what do you look at? Yeah, no, great question. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I've got yeah maybe three four deals going right now. But you're right, it's. I guess it's, I do look at the numbers, right? I mean, you want to make sure these are, you know, good investments, good assets. Um, what do you look at from a, from a, an asset perspective? As far as, let's, let's break it out in three parts. Kay. The asset, the return, and the borrower. Um, I'd say on the asset side, I want to make sure, at least maybe on these, on these multifamilies, that, you know, it's not something that, you know, it's going to have to have a bunch of money dumped into it. Right. I want to make sure it's a it's a good asset. It's, it's a one time investment. Yeah. and You're not calling me for more. Yeah, exactly. They're not reaching back out. They're doing another round to, of, of investing. Um, my shares are diluted, whatever it may be. Right. Um, but um, I think make sure it's an asset we're not dumping money into, not bleeding money that first year. Um, uh, and then what was the we, second one? And we've talked a lot about that, man. Like uh, like my my investment strategy when interest rates were down and, and finance like uh, financing was easy to come by. I'd, I'd buy fixer uppers, yep. apartment buildings, right? And so we wouldn't have the cash flow, but we had so much equity built up, we can create like an interest go, reserve, go grab. still pay yep. our investors. Mm -hmm. And then we could refinance at a value that was higher than what we could sell it for, yeah. right? Like what we would net on the LTV from a refi would be the same as what we would net 
after a sale. So it's like, why even sell it? Just refinance it. And now with rates. You know? yeah. But now with rates increasing, values coming down, and it gets a lot tighter. And so, um, yeah, our, and, and, and it's standard, or it should be standard for people to be able to, uh, you know, change their direction because markets change yeah. and access to finance, access to money changes. And, and so your strategy needs to change as well whenever you're investing in anything. And so now we're buying more stabilized stuff. We're doing seller financing. Yep. We're buying things at cash flow day one yep. because what you don't want is to have to go back and raise more money on a deal, which we've, we've had to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's okay if you get a lot of spread, spread but it's not okay if that, spreads tight. are tight, yeah, yeah. you know? And so you, you want something that's cash flowing from day one um, because you don't want to have to float that. Yeah, I think that's important. That, you yeah, you mentioned cash flowing day one, right? I think that's very important. It's not necessarily what it's going to do or what it could do. I like to look at investments, at least the asset what, you know, part. Where well, it's, it's going to give you worst case scenario. Yeah, right? exactly. Worst case scenario, so, I know it can keep on doing what it's already doing. Yeah. You know? And if we can renovate some units, if we can throw some Airbnbs in yeah. there, if we can I increase the rents, if we can reduce some of the expenses, that's amazing, but I know from a worst case scenario, at least it'll keep doing what it's doing. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've put some money into you know the B class, C, C plus apartments, and those definitely require a lot more work, right? Yeah, um, we versus, talked about versus, that. Versus an A, uh, one out in Texas, where that one's just it's beautiful, right? It's mm -hmm. like the guy took care of it. It's like he redid it all, and it didn't it's look like, as opportunistic on paper. Yeah, or it, didn't look it, as... and it doesn't. It, at first, it's not cash flowing as much as the other one was, right? But I've noticed over the a couple of years here, you're not putting much money at all into exactly. that one, right? Which um, dilutes so, the returns, increases exactly, the cost basis. So, like, so as far as an asset cash flowing not having to dump a bunch of money, mm -hmm. right? Um, not not real value add type property. So I think that's important. Um, what, what was the second thing? I know the third uh, one was- The returns. Was, what kind of returns re are you Returns. Um, are, you looking at, are you looking at returns from a risk reward perspective? Mm -hmm. Are you looking at returns from a um, opportunity cost perspective of like, hey, I can throw it into a mutual fund and make this much, or I can throw it into this stock and make this much, or- yeah, it's also, I feel, um, yeah, I think- Or a diversification I, I think type. it's more diversification, right? Because, okay. I mean, I have all that, right? With with IRAs, 401ks, you know, like we talked about peeling the money off where, you know, the advisor's just, you know, investing that money. Um, and then this, I just feel real estate's a little bit safer for me personally. I just mm -hmm. feel like that's a, a safer investment, right? I feel like it's more of a uh, inflation protected investment. Very much so. Um, and so that's, yeah, so diversification wise, yes, that's where I'm looking at it for, for that purpose. Um, you know, um, cash on cash return. I don't know if I could throw a percentage out there. I mean, I, I'm definitely looking for, you know, 10, 15%, you know, um, you know, I, but I also think so like a base of 10 with yeah. some equity or something. Yeah, could, maybe some equity or maybe some juice at the end. I know a lot of these deals and I'm, I'm sure you do them. There's the other guys doing where at the end, you know, they'll, they'll come back after the refi and you, know, you pay out, um, you know, five, six percent you know, per year added on to what they were already paying you yep. type type thing. So I think that's that's attractive. I know that's not guaranteed, yep. um, but that's I guess that's why you go back to number one and you say, all right, what what type of asset are we going to be in? Where are rates at uh, at, at that you know, particular point? But I think the third point um, that you were asking about is is the person or who am I investing with? And I think that's probably my most important one. Um, at least me personally, I just, I think, I, I think anybody who's a smart investor, man, yeah, that is the number one. I think that's just, when I get into investments or investing with people, it's, it's all about the person to me, you know, like, I, honestly, I just, it, it doesn't matter to me. It, it, here you go. Yeah. And like, I trust you, like, you know, it go, it's all business. You're going to do business with, with people, you know, you like, and you trust. Mm -hmm. And I think the last one's probably the biggest one. Very much so. Right. So you build that what relationship. What are they going to do, man, when shit hits the fan? Yeah. What are they going to do when shit hits the fan? You know, do you trust this person to, you know, like if, if does, if shit does hit the fan, you know, are they going to make, does. are they, yeah, and it's something, something <laughs> happened, right? You're going through a lot of shit, right? Yeah. Like, so are they, are they going to make it right? They're going to work their tail off to yeah. make it right. And, and so that's where I think that's where you just got to, you know, it, are they going to, you know, bitch about something like a small amount of money or are they going to, you know, make, make things right. Right. So I think that's where I try to, I focus on more of that, that third one. With, how with, do you, how do you qualify those people? Like, how do you find them? How do you? Good point. Yeah, I think it, it, you underwrite it a person. It can't happen right away, right? You know, um, I think it's just something where you got to, over time, you just build a relationship with somebody and you're like, okay, this is, this is good. This do is you a build a relationship first and then eventually invest? Or do you start out, hey, you know, this person comes recommended. Let me start out with a small dollar amount or a little bit of both. I think a little bit of both. I think it's more what you mentioned first. I think you, you build a relationship first. 
right? And then, then you go to the investing part. Or it could be where somebody else has that relationship and you trust that person who has that relationship, you know, where you can invest. Because I did one deal like that where, I mean, things are fine, but, um, and I had met that, you know, in person before, so, but I don't know them yep. as well. Um, but I invested because this one person told me, hey, you know, and I trusted that person. So yeah, yeah. I think that was more, yeah, so really, I feel like it really came back to that, at least, at least for me. I mean, I know yeah. everybody's different, but in somebody can sell you on a deal and sell you on an asset and sell you on a return, yep. a big return. And, you know, oh, that's attractive. Um, but what it's going to come down to yeah. is like, hey, you know, it's, it's, you know is that person going to you'll make it happen or, you know, are they going to, you know, just like we said, shit hits the fan. They can Dude, get it the, done. The, the longer that I'm in business, the more I care and the longer I'm in, you know, finance and all that, dude, the more I care about principal protection, yeah. right? Making sure I don't lose, don't lose money, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's the number one rule of investing yeah. says, says Warren Buffett. And, and it makes more and more sense the longer I'm in this. It's like, I don't care about big returns, dude. I want consistent returns over time. over time and those compound and they grow and I want zero risk to principal or as close to zero. I want all my risk mitigated as much as possible. And you do that by looking at the right asset, looking at the right operator, you know, whoever the, the you need an is. index annuity, man. You need to sell you an index annuity. <laughs> <laughs> so I, was I, like, so. I was like, man, you can sell an index annuity right now. Well, dude, I just want, well, and that's, and that's kind of how I, 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 I kind of sell, um, that's what you're doing. Our, our returns. Yeah. That's that like way, a, right? it's like, a, like, listen, this is, this is a hybrid type of a thing. Yeah. You're gonna get your predictable return yeah. from you know, the, the, the debt side, yeah. right? And the preferred return, I'm gonna pay eight, 10% as we go. And then there's gonna be equity upside that jumps you to somewhere in the mid teens yeah. or high teens kind of a thing. Uh, but this isn't guaranteed, yeah. right? Like there's some risk in mm -hmm. this, but this, and we can't say, you can't use the words guaranteed over here either, but I've never had anybody not make this in any of my deals. Yeah. I've had people not make that double this, yeah. and some not make this at all because the, I've had to write checks in order to get out of deals, and I've lost millions of dollars yeah. be, in order to write the check. But but my investors never lost principal, yeah. and they never lost their their uh, their base return yeah. either. You know what I mean? And so um, uh, I think I think if I'm investing in something, that's the kind of stuff that I would want to, invest. and that's why I borrow money that same way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause that's, uh, you know, I think it'd be hypocritical to not borrow money in the same kind of stuff that I would invest in. So yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not looking for 25% returns, man. When I invest in something and I want, dude, if I can get a solid 12 yeah. with zero to very, very, very little risk to my principal, Dude, I would throw my money at that all day. Absolutely. That's reasonable. That's reasonable, right? When somebody starts promising 25% returns, that's when you, it's a big red flag, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So, but and, 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 dude, I've paid out 30 plus before, you yeah. know, to invest. And 50, actually about 45, 50, we've hit a couple, on equity investments, not like, um, uh, you know, just flash in the pan things. Like, these are deals that took two years and, you know, they, they hit out and they just performed really, really well. And, um, uh, and so, like that's that's feasible, mm -hmm. and it, it's it, it can happen. A little tighter right now than, but it might be opportunistic again. Um, but I guess my point is like, it can happen, but I would never you know, promote that. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's too good to be true, and yeah. it it might it can, be realistic, right? but I just wouldn't even yeah. I wouldn't even promote it. I'd, I'd say, hey, we're conservative on all these different levels, and here's what we're hoping for. Yeah. And, um, I give a very realistic, right? You go to too pessimistic, then nobody's interested. Yeah, too optimistic, too yeah. good to be true. It needs yeah. to be realistic when you're talking yeah. about some of right. these things. Right in the middle. Yeah. So. Absolutely. But yeah, D diversification, you know, doing things multifamily, short term rental. I mean, shoot, startups, you know, yeah. like I have, you know, buddies that are, you know, throw me deals like that, right? Um, you know, do, you, do you put money in those? Yeah, put money in those too. Um, you know, do they all, you know, we were talking about a guy earlier, do they all, you know, win? No. Yeah. Uh, but some of them do well, right? Um, you know, th so I think that's that's important too. Um, but I'm, but I'm also uh, putting money because I trust that person as well. Like, hey, yeah. what do you you know, like, you know, what do you think about this deal? You know, the the, the people that you know and respect, right? Are they yeah. operators in that company? No, yeah, but they are getting into you know early round funding, right? Of these these startups, right? Yeah. So. Um, so, hey, you want to invest? Um, yeah, type, well, type thing. It depends so. on your risk reward, man. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, where are you? 
I have money in a in a um, prop tech fund. Okay. And put half a million bucks in there, and they invested in uh, twenty four different companies. Okay. And twenty two of like one already went bankrupt. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna lose a lot. <laughs> Another one already exited. Okay. And we made a decent return on it. The other 22 are in varying phases of doing great, doing okay, uh, doing shitty, or, yeah. or borderline yeah. bankrupt. You know what I mean? And um, uh, they're all, but you have to know, like, I knew that I was going to, like, I know that that's a five to 10 year play, yeah. that one or two of them is either gonna get bought by private equity or go public, yeah. and we'll make, we'll far exceed our gains on those one or two, and the other, uh, whatever 18 are probably going to fail, fail or at best pay us back our money kind yeah. of a thing and but i know that going in you know and so, and i only have one investment like that got it all my other money is in what's a typical timeline on something thing. like that did they, you said five ten years but do they give you like hey after five years we're gonna if there's an exit like the one company that did exit okay uh we got paid out on that got it um if there's like a or, or the other way that we would if there's you get bought out you go public or um i'm sorry you, uh, I'm sure go public's probably yeah, a big you, one. Yeah, you right? go public, yeah. you sell to private equity, or they recapitalize yeah. and they have a, a right to buy you out at some it's kind of like what we're going through at our company right now. Right, so, yeah. right. And so uh, those are the three ways that you get your money back. And as each one of those happens, they make a distribution Got to it. us. Okay, I like um, that. Yeah. So it was. It yeah. was. Uh, and it's with a guy who's invested probably, I don't know, five, six, seven million dollars with me. Yeah. Because he sold his. VC okay. firm, um, and he knows what the hell he's doing. Yeah. You know, it's somebody so you I built trust, that relationship. Yeah, there done you go. business with me. Right. I want to do business with them. Yep. And so we've uh, we've continued doing business that way. And uh, but it's the highest risk thing that I have. Yeah. Right. Outside of probably you know I got another half uh, a little over half a million dollars in Bitcoin and crypto and some stuff like that. But, okay. Um, there. Yeah. And then everything else, dude, is just boring ass. You ever sweat at night about Bitcoin really? or no? Like nah, I did, did that for a little bit. Because yeah. I got a 10-year time horizon on okay. it, right? I don't expect to see Good. Yeah, you just put it away. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. more of a, I think I think if you're looking at it on a daily basis, you get stressed out over yeah. it. But for me, man, I just, hey, this is a set it and forget it kind of a gotcha. thing. Yeah. I think the industry, I'm betting on the industry as a whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then everything else, man, I just want base hits. Yeah. Base hits in real estate and, I don't know, uh, I only have like, I don't think I have more than two hundred grand in um, in equities. Yeah, in equities. Yeah. I don't think I don't think I have more than two hundred grand in stocks and bonds and stuff like that. So everything else is like in in deals, or it's investing in my own businesses because mm -hmm. I think that's a good return on your investment too. Absolutely, because yeah. that's going to compound mm -hmm. greater returns than anything else that you can Absolutely. any passive kind of investment. Invest in yourself. Yeah, man. But dude, I love I love your strategy, man. I got a ton of respect for what you've done. Ton of respect for how you've built your your life and. Um, uh, your investment strategy, your your mindset around family, your mindset around health, and just appreciate the relationship, yeah. brother. Thanks, man. Thanks yeah, for being I appreciate here. being here. That's yeah, it, man. This is good. Awesome. Hey, hopefully you guys got some great takeaways from that. Mike is such a good dude, and uh, I got a ton of respect for him when it comes to personal finance. So we'd love to hear your greatest takeaways uh, or any strategies that you're implementing in the personal finance world to increase your earning potential, decrease your expenses, create more of a spread, and then multiply that money. So put it in the comments below. If you would, like the video, share it with anybody else who you think might get some value out of this. And until next time, I'll see you on Spilling the Beans.